Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Hardcastle Homestead. We are doing just a quick check-in here, and uh, I am a little bit late. I wanted to do this two weeks ago, but better to get your seeds in the ground than nothing at all, because then you're guaranteed to have no food if you plant nothing. You still have a chance for food if you just throw the seeds in the ground and try. Um, so today, don't know if you can read those. I am planting onions. Uh, fun fact about onions, you have long days, intermediate or neutral days, and then short days. Where I live in Missouri, we fall in the neutral category. So I have very limited types and varieties that fit specifically for our region because a lot of varieties are either long day or short day. So what I like to do, since I'm right on the line, is I'll plant a few intermediate days. I will plant a few of the long days and I will plant a few of the short days. And I, depending on how our summer goes and how our sunlight goes, that's gonna tell us um, how our season was. But I'm gonna take you guys along here and show you some of the varieties we're gonna be planting. We have Walla Wallas, which are long days. Zebra and Shallots, which are long days. Utah Yellow Sweet Spanish, which are long day. Um, this one is the Alyssa Craig. I just put the seeds in there. And another fun fact you can see with the seeds is I plant them ridiculously close. Um, I have a two and a half by two and a half container. I'd love to upgrade with Bootstrap Farmer and get the five by five, but for right now I'm working with what I have. So what I do is I clump them really, really close when they're seedlings, and then when I, sorry, I got cut off, but when I have baby sprouts come up, um, then we upsize them and we transplant them out. They really do handle transplanting very, very well. So I just, right now, this is a Lauren method, totally don't have tags with me, but I will put these on here and take a picture. That way when I come back, you see I did it here as well, when I come back eventually, I do put tags in. Um, but sorry, continuing back on what the onions are. And then here are our short days all lined up. We have Cipollini, Bianca de Maggio onion, and then I, oh God, Tripopinia lunga. <laughs> um, I don't speak Italian or Spanish. Like in my arsenal i have a little bit of german and french so i'm probably butchering these and i do apologize ahead of time and then walla wallas so with them you can see oops so sorry they i love how in my gardener marks long day and short day because here we go you can see how he marks it on his seed packages which is great and also great information on here all right guys gardening kitty wanted to say hi she's out in the greenhouse with me looking so cute just wanting love so sweet so sweet but i'm gonna be using these last two cells here i can get you guys set up nice is gardening on the budget and it's finest there we go so you can see my hand okay so what i like to do is when we open the seed pack i do like to use all of the seeds in one go onions carrots and um corn are notorious for having a shorter window on how long you can store the seeds even if you store them properly they just have a lower germination rate after the first year and I mean I have seed packets that are three four years old and I'm still gonna plant them to plant them but I will say from experience it was a lot lower input and I actually did have to buy more carrot seeds um, but going into it I just dumped the entire packet which is 75 seeds if uh, I actually only have 75 but most of the time with in my gardener they overpack their seed packs, so I bet there's more than 75 here. And then I sprinkle them in. 
and it is very close planting. If I have a grouping too close, I will shift them. I'm gonna take just a very light handful of soil, sprinkle it over the top for a little protection. And what I love about the bottom watering is I can fill this tray about halfway full and the water is going to absorb up through the soil, which is great. And I can just leave them and I have to go and wake up the toddler soon, so that's perfect. But I put that right on top so that way I do not forget when I come back. A little ADHD hack. So sorry, probably just saw my thumb. Moving you guys right on down with where I'm working. So, let's see if I can do this. Ah, I'm gonna pause you guys. All right, so cutting back in, I have filled all of these now with a little bit of soil on top. Oh, that chunk's huge. Um, I'm going to be taking a picture. That way I can make the tags later today during nap time and just trying to be more in that mindful set of setting myself up for success by having some organization pattern to it. But here's what we're looking at. And if anyone's wondering what this is, basically onions need to be planted super early. It needs to go through a little bit of that cold because they, they're biannuals technically. So this is a way of planting them early enough where it's still winter's coming for Missouri. I once again plant them during our first fake spring. Because right now, I think yesterday's high was 68, which is not normal. Normally we're in 30s and 40s. So I don't believe the groundhog either. <laughs> and I think we're going to be having some intense winter coming our way in probably two or three weeks. So I'm ready. Uh, I've also had several people asking. Here, let me turn you around. I have also been having several people asking um, because of how I'm doing the tulips and everything and being late. Uh, people have been reaching out, at least on some of my other social medias. Um, so when I'm down here, I'm feeling like the irises, the rhizomes are still very firm. They just need to be woke up pretty much. You can see over here, the tulips are starting to sprout, which is awesome. These little babies are going to town. And that's my biggest thing on gardening is we need to stop worrying about having to follow all of the rules because that that's just that's stressful. We don't live in an area of perfection. We live in an era of practice. And once you practice long enough, you find your way, which I think is so awesome. And that's why, yes, a lot of these videos, they are great. I follow a lot of these videos of some of our more mainstream homesteaders, but I'm letting you know, and they would let you know too, they are giving you optimal growing conditions. And they are teaching you how to do better when it's a place where you can do better. But don't let those messages stop you thinking because you're not in the optical way, or optimal way, sorry, it's early, that you just shouldn't garden because you don't have it all together yet. No, go grab a container, go and test it out, go and grow something that you love every year that you want to try fresh, whether it's cucumbers, tomatoes. Yes, there are ways to do it on a budget-friendly way. You just got to find it. You got to try it. And you got to be okay with accepting that it might be a failure, but it's not actually a failure. It's just a life lesson of you learning. So on that note of Lauren stepping off her garden soapbox. Uh, so now I've stepped off my garden soapbox. Sorry if video cut out if it looks a little bit wonky. Um, I've got to get the cat inside. She is chilling down there, and it's an old coffee table that we're repurposing. Some tables in here. Uh, I will be rearranging the greenhouse when I get the flooring down, which I think will be crushed rock, which will work perfect for in here. Um, but I do hear movement inside, so I do need to get going. I just want to make sure to sign off here and remind you guys to go outside and get dirty, and I'll see you next time. Bye.